So welcome back to my channel. This is Dom and today I'm going to do something slightly different. Uh, excuse the croaky throat. Um, so I'm going to have another go at uh, Boxer Rebellion. But this time rather than playing Men Who Will Be Kings, which is uh, the rule system I have been using mainly, I'm going to try Sharp Practice. Um, now somebody suggested um, that um, the Lardies Lardies do these uh, magazines um, that I think they're twice a year and in the 2021 edition there was Go Sharp Into The Desert which is playing sharp practice in the Sudan and actually reading through it I think the, the, the rules could work really nicely with the Boxer Rebellion and so I'm going to have a go at it and I'm going to just I'm not doing anything sophisticated, I'm just literally going based on the magazine's um, uh, suggestions. This is uh, an article by John Savage Pasha, um, and I'm just taking exactly what he did. And it's an interesting variation he's, he's built. I mean, he, he's kept to the... Um, kept to the basic sharp practice rules but sort of mixed in a few little nuances um, including something which you'll recognize if you played uh, infamy so anyway we'll, we'll get to that as we play the game so as uh, so i haven't been sophisticated i've just literally taken the values um that he gave for the sudan um and we'll see how it plays out so i've gone for relatively small forces um, they're roughly the same in terms of sharp practice points, at least. So the boxers will have 65 points, and the uh, and the allied forces, which are mainly British, uh, 63. So how does that equate? We've got um, what have we got? A level two leader uh, here on the horse for the British. We've got eight British regulars. Um, now they count as um, breech loading rifles. They have sharp practice and something called flexible drill. Now, flexible drill in this variant of the game allows them to break into skirmish formation pretty much whenever they want and form back up again whenever they want. But if they're in skirmish, they get the benefit of cover, but they don't get the benefit of shooting. So light infantry and skirmishers obviously get a plus one when firing at distance or whereas these will not but they can break into skirmish and that's kind of to show the different i guess in the earlier period which sharp practice covers um it was a very much a specialist thing to be skirmishers whereas in the latter um 20th century um so the victorian wars the um it was much more usual doctrine for troops to break out into skirmish range dictated by the the, the, the quality of the weaponry i guess um, but it doesn't necessarily mean they were any better at shooting so that's why they've done it that way which i like i've got a level, level one leader here and then another group of eight indian regulars and they're exactly the same as the british so they've got uh, breech loading rifles sharp practice and that same flexible drill then to support them, I've got a unit of uh, Russian regulars. They're led by a level one leader. Now they're slightly different. I've taken away, um, I've changed their point system. So they've still got the breech loading rifle, um, but they don't have sharp practice or flexible drill. And I've given them stubborn uh, under the rules. So still fairly effective, but more um, sticking with the old traditional formations. I think that works for them. Now, the other rule that I'm bringing in for Boxer is that the British Level 2 can't control the Russian Level 1. Um, because they, certainly in the early part of the Boxer War, there was um, very distinct lines of communication and some commanders just refused to act under others. Um, so that's how I'm treating that. So the Russians can only control themselves. And then just because I wanted to try them out, I've got a unit of six Bengal Lancers led by a level one commander now they have a lance obviously and breech loading carbines they are classed as aggressive and they have tally ho so could be interesting to see how they work now on the boxer side again slight difference here in these variants they've basically instigated something called a mob so it's like a formation 
um, but it, it generates fervor, which if you played uh, Infamy, you'll know. Um, basically, fervor helps them to shake off shock easier, or to not be affected by shock easier. So, again, I've kept it really simple, and I, I, I think the, the boxers will need a little bit more tinkering with um, compared to the Sudanese. Um, but I've gone for a level three leader and a level one leader, and then four groups of 10 boxers. Now the boxers are, um, um, they count as having spears and swords, so no, uh, no missile weapons at all. They have something called wild charge, which basically allows them to fight much stronger in the first charge. They're aggressive, they have swift as the wind, gone to ground and tactical. Gone to ground is a special rule again from the magazine which allows them basically to hit the deck at the end of their move. Um, means that they any shooting coming at them will, will be treated as um, like they're in cover, like they're in light cover. Um, now that's very much the Sudanese thing, I'm not sure necessarily the boxers did that but um, I'm going to play it just because I want to see the effect it has on the game. What it does mean is if you go to ground the next turn, it costs you an extra activation to sit up or to jump up. Um, so, you know, could be useful in certain circumstances. Um, and Swift of the Wind <coughs> is basically like <coughs> the French um, is it Pas de Charge rule where they you play two command cards and it allows you to move with three movement dice and remove two shock from your mob. A mob can be any number of groups, um, as long as they're together, and they can act as a, like a formation, basically. Um, so that's them. So that could be useful for groups of ten. And then over here, I've got two groups of Kansu Braves, led by level one commanders. Now these guys have breech-loading rifles, um, but they are classed as militia, poor shots, and surly. I'm not sure Surly fits with the category of uh, Kansus because um, most of the histories say that the Kansus were some of the most formidable for foes that the uh, coalition fought against. But again, I'm just playing this as per the books. I've taken that from exactly from one of the listings um, and we'll see how it plays. So there you go. That is uh, the formations. You've got only four commanders each side. Uh, but, but in terms of troop numbers, the boxers certainly outnumber the uh, coalition force. Um, but we'll see uh, how this plays out. So terrain-wise, um, I've kept it, again, fairly simple. Um, you've got a wood, some buildings, another couple of buildings. I've, I've left the hills out. Usually I put them underneath the rugs, but... Um, People were saying they couldn't actually see where the hills were, so I've left them like that just so that people can see. You've got a compound here with another building and a well. Another wood over here and a paddy field over here. So there we go. So I think what we're going to say is the uh, coalition forces will come on on this corner. The boxers will come on on that corner. And um, the objective is to secure this compound by the end of the game. So that's the rules, uh, that's the game, and um, yeah, we'll get going. I put four command cards in, in the pack uh, for, for each side, so that should give a little bit of variety. Okay, so uh, I forgot to say I did force morale for both sides. They both rolled high, uh, allies rolled five, the uh, boxers rolled six. Um, the majority of the boxers are, uh, are tribal, which gives them plus one, uh, which also is what the, the allies get because they're uh, majority regular. So end up, both sides have force morale of 11. So first card out is a blue, I'm playing blue as boxers. Uh, blue flag, two blue flags. Blue leader, two. Now that's the level one commander with the uh, boxers. Um, so they can't do anything because he's... Oh, so that's three flags. Three flags for the boxers. Do I burn... Might as well burn... Um, uh, burn them and activate the level 
one commander um, to bring on all the boxes um, because um, not going to be use them at the end of the turn so let's do that we'll burn those and I'll bring the forces on okay so um, I basically split the four groups of boxes into two groups of two um, and they formed a mob uh, two mobs so the level one commanders got control of those they move 12 inches plus another six because they're out of sight of the enemy uh, to there now they're tactical so it means they, they aren't slowed by terrain um, and I rolled for their fervor and they rolled the maximum. They rolled a six, which gives both those groups five points of fervor. Now, basically, the way it works under this magazine, that will allow them to move an additional five inches um, each time they move. Um, it will any any shock they take will be taken from the fervor first. So basically, they can take five points of shock before it affects the unit, which is pretty powerful. Um, it doesn't add anything to their melee, um, but it does help them get into contact, which is going to be interesting. And then the other two groups under the commander level three commander, uh, um, they rolled less good. They rolled a two, which gave them t three points of shock, uh, a fervor each, ready for the game. So that is the um, um, boxers on. British two. British two is the Indian number one commander. And I think I'm going to bring him on. Um, I'm going to keep them separate because I don't have enough British forces to really um, allow them to be split too far. So let's just move those cards out of the way a bit. Might as well turn that one over because the two's never going to happen. Um, the British Indian or the Indian troops. They can go six inches. I don't think they can be seen, so I'll give them 12 inches from deployment. And that brings them, they'll just go straight down the road, I think. British leader three. That's the uh, Russians. So I think they'll do the same. They'll come up alongside the Indians. Remember, they can't be controlled by the British level three commander um, boxer four boxer four is the Kansus first unit of Kansus actually third se um, second unit of Kansus so I'll move those on right so that's Kansu unit um, moved it comes on as six inches but it can't be seen so that's 12 inches now I'm gonna say it couldn't be seen from deployment point so 12 inches onto the table there. British leader one, that is uh, the level two commander. So I think he will just come on directly behind the one, behind this guy here, move this. There we go. Come straight on behind the Indians. That's that. British leader four, that's the cavalry. Um, do I bring them on straight away? Uh, so they could deploy, because they are classed as impact cavalry. Um, they can come on nine inches plus, I don't think they can be seen. So that's 15 inches. So we'll push them right out to here. All the allies are on. British flag. Um, that's box of one, but they've already moved. Another flag for the boxes, but can't be used because they've used they've only got they've used the three flags. And there's the remaining boxer. So he can come on and then all the forces will be deployed. So the other Kansu unit moved on um, behind there. Now notice they don't get any further because they aren't um, in a mob. So, <coughs> excuse me, all forces are on the table. <laughs> and there's Tiffin. Um, so we'll shuffle the pack and come back with turn two. 
Okay, so turn two, first card out is a box of flag, and then is box of four. So that is um, the second unit of Kansu. Hmm. So what to do with them, fellas? So I think they're going to move forward um, and head into that enclosure in front of them. Uh, they roll ooh, 11, so they're up for it. Now they don't have tactical, so they're going to be slowed, which means they can only move, uh, they'll lose a dice climbing over the wall, so they're basically they'll get to the edge of this wall, like that. Bit of a shame, there you go, that's them done. Red flag. Red leader three, red leader three, is the um, Russians. <clears throat> I think they'll just um, move forward. Ah, three inches. <laughs> That's them done. British 2 is the Indian commander. Um, shall I move these cards out of the way because they're a bit in the way there? <clears throat> I think they will move. Uh, I think they'll move that direction, head towards that woods. Seven inches. Uh, now they're not in column, so they can't get benefit of the road. Um, so they'll just head forward to there, I guess. Next card is Tiffin. Um, so both have one flag. Um, there is no difference in the force morale. Throw all the dice. The red dice is the allies. The black dice is the boxers. Highest gets choice of <laughs> two threes. Try again. <coughs> Excuse me. The boxers throw five. So they get to move with one unit first, or one mob first. Um, what to do? I'm going to move the mob there as fast as they can go. Um, they'll get two dice of movement, plus they get plus five. Um, so let's see where they get. So only a four, but uh, goes to a nine because of uh, the fervor. Right, so the boxers did their nine inches, um, scooted around the back of that building there. Um, the British chose to move their uh, British infantry, uh, rolled seven as well, so they moved straight up behind the Indians, and that is turn two over with. Shuffle the pack, and we're back for turn three. Mm. Right, turn three. First card is the um, Bengal Lancers. <coughs> I think they're going to move up behind this hill here. So they're at the, um, well they came on at the walk. So, so they're going to change the canter, which gives them plus three um, to each pip. And they rolled two dice. So they rolled an eight, uh, which becomes seven each, which is 14 inches. Now the question is, how are Lancers going to do against a mob of angry boxers? I guess we're going to find out. Next card out is a British flag. Boxer flag. A third flag. So that's three flags in a row, which is a random event. <coughs> a random movement event. An eight. Dress the ranks. The ground is worse than it looks. A formation, not a group, reduces dice rolled in the movement for the next zone by half. Uh, but it is a group, not a formation, so that won't affect him. Uh, it does give the Allies two flags, but I think we'll keep going. Another flag, this time a boxer one. <laughs> Crikey, it's all flags. That's another two in a row. And Tiffin. <laughs> okay. So the Allies have three flags, the Boxers have two. Um, 
So I think then we'll start with the Allied forces first. They burn one of their flags first and then we'll do boxes, blah, blah, blah. So uh, first up, I feel like those um, Indians need to be ready for when those boxes come around that corner. Um, I'll tell you what, we're going to start with the Russians. Start with the Russians. They are going to advance this way as fast as they can. Oh, 11. A bit keener this time. They move to there. So that's the first card burnt. Uh, for the boxers. I think they will fight. They'll move the Kansu warriors over there. <clears throat> They're going to move, hop over that wall in front of them. They roll a four and a one. So I would imagine they'll lose the one because they don't count as. So basically, they're half on, not half off there. Midway crossing the the wall. They don't count as um, they don't have a tactical move, so they're not. Um, they are slowed by terrain. So that's the boxer unit. Next out, um, I guess we're going to have to move these Indians because they're in the way. Otherwise, um, do they go into the woods or do they keep away from the woods? That's the interesting question. I think they come away. I think they head this way. Um, 11 inches they're keen to get away from those woods they're a bit worried about them so they're going to move out to there should move so they're slightly pointing that way that's the way to do it so that's them then the boxers will move this mob over the behind these buildings next they are uh, two dice Plus they get plus three because they've got three lots of fervor. They rolled a, a six, which moves them up to nine inches. They're not slowed. So they're just basically going to move these trees for a minute. They come up to there. You have to tell me whether you prefer the uh, the hills like this on top or hidden underneath. Aesthetically, it's better underneath, but so the problem is, people said they couldn't actually see what was uh, where the hills were. And if I'm honest, I lost a couple of times where the hills were. <laughs> All right, so that's them moving forward. And then the final, uh, yeah, the final allied dice is going to be this British unit here. I think they're just going to come up and form a line there, eight inches. The readiness for those uh, those boxes that are coming around the corner, and it is their turn. So what are they going to do? Um, I think they're just going to come around as fast as they can. <clears throat> I get plus five on the dice because of uh, fervor. Oh, -ho! rolled a ten, which is fifteen inches. Wow, it does get them moving, that's for sure. So fifteen inches brings them to there. That's getting quite close to the allied formations. I feel like I don't want them to go in individually, so they may have to slow up a bit. Um, but, um, yeah, we'll see. You never know in sharp practice, because the way the, the, the cards come out um, can make a mockery of your plans. But we've got a situation where we've got one boxer group coming around this side. You've got the rifleman, Kensu rifleman here. And the other boxers coming around here. Meanwhile, the... Lancers are heading out wide, Russians and the uh, Indians holding the centre and the Brits on the flank. I feel next turn we could have some shooties. Right, turn four. 
First card is British Leader 1, or Allied Leader 1. That's the level 2 commander there. Um, so I think what he's going to do, is going to use his first command to order the Indians um, to present and fire at the uh, boxers down there. Now I'm going to give them cover because there's a bridge, there's the, the, the wagon there all in the way. But I think that is the best thing to do with the Indians. So um, they are breech loading rifles, which gives them an effective range of 24, so they're well in effective range. Right, so uh, we've got six men. Can't use the officer because, um, sorry, you've got eight men even. Two, four, six, eight. Can't use the officer because he's being ordered by the British commander. Um, they get a first fire, so let's work this through. So volley uh, effective range is five to hit. Um, they are aiming, which brings it down to a four, and the um, first fire brings them down to a three to hit. Um, nothing else to take away, so threes to hit. Oh. <laughs> Obviously a bit of damp powder here. They missed with five. Good grief. Only three hits. Only three hits. Um, now the target is in the open. So it is the uh, allied choice on where the casualties go. So we'll put two on the group nearest and one on the group furthest. So a three and a two. Um, as I said, I'm giving them cover because of the uh, obstructions there. So actually a three and a two is nothing. And then the other unit there takes a four, so that's one hit, which will reduce their shock by, uh, reduce their fervor by one. That's the way it works. So that was a dreadful volley by the Indians. They're obviously very nervous about all these uh, uh, boxers close by. Um, now, uh, because they're breech loading rifles, they don't have to reload. They're instantly reloaded. That means his the commander now has another action for himself. I think he's going to order his own men. Now he can't, they can't really see anything where they are. I would put them in this building, but there's no windows on this side, so that's not really going to help them very much. I think they're going to move. They're going to head that direction. Huh, they only move three inches. So that doesn't really help them terribly. There we go, and that is British Leader 1 done. A flag, British flag. A boxer flag. Another flag. So that's a random event. This time a shooting one. Roll of five. Fire. The near, nearest building within 12 inches of the fire is caught fire. <clears throat> so, 12 inches. This building is now on fire. That's interesting. There we go. That one is burning. <laughs> does give the boxers two flags and the allies one. Not sure the boxers will use it because they may just use them at the end of the turn. That's a third boxer flag. Again, not really much point using it right now because um, they're going to be able to activate three units at the end, even if Tiffin comes out. So, boxer four. Boxer four has come out rather a lot. That's the uh, Kansu Braves. The Kansu Braves over here. <clears throat> Don't think they've got a sh have they got a shot on the Russians? <clears throat> I think they're gonna move forward and try and hop over that wall and get into the other enclosure. They rolled an eleven, but they'll lose one dice. Basically, come forward to there. 
Okay, that's them done. Next card, another flag. So we've now had two allied and three um, boxer flags. Tiffin. <laughs> Tiffin. Okay, so this time it's three boxers versus two coalition, which means the boxers get first choice. So I think what they'll do is move the other unit of Kansu forward and um, bring them up to the edge of this wood, uh, edge of this um, fence. I rolled a seven. <coughs> Basically brings them up to there. Oops. The um, allies, well, they can't activate the Indians again because they've already activated, so they've only got the Bengals and the um, Russians. I think their choice is going to be advance the Russians. Hmm. I think they see how far they go with one dice of movement. Five inches. Not really going to give them anything to shoot at, so they'll move the other dice. So another two. So they get to there. Not sure they can. Be, uh, I suppose they could probably see those guys in the enclosure um, and be seen by them, but I think it's going to be some sort of degree of cover because they're sort of peering over the top of the hill. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. Probably the guys around the corner can fire. Anyway, that's that. Uh, boxer next. We'll move this. No, we're going to move this group over here. Uh, this mob. <laughs> Now, bear in mind the far group has taken a sh took one shock, which means it's Ferber's down to four now. Um, so, if we want to stick them together, uh, they need to move at the speed of uh, four plus four rather than plus five. Um, I think they're going to head for the woods. They rolled an eight. Right, so there they go. They rush forward into the woods there. Put some pressure on those uh, allied troops. Next out the bag. Um, second unit is going to be the Bengal Lancers. Now, I think they're going to pass. I don't think I really want to move them up against there. So they're going to slow to the... I guess they have to slow to the walk though, don't they? because they were trotting or cantering before and <clears throat> you could only change one speed and I don't really want to get them into the woods there so so I don't have to so if I'm walking I have to move at least one dice that's what I'm going to do or oh, five so they're going to move to the walk there don't really want to go into a wood against a whole load of hairy ass um, boxers. And the aforementioned hairy ass boxers are the next unit to move. So um, they're just gonna move forward. They get plus three on their dice. So they rolled a seven, so they get 10 inches. That's where the boxers get to. So I think that is turn four done. So we'll shuffle the cards and do turn five. Right then, turn five. First card, boxer flag, second flag. 
I don't know how many times this uh, box, the Kansu uh, Braves Unit 4 comes out. It seems to be every time first up. Uh, so that's these fellas here. Now then, what have they got a view of? They can see half the... Uh, I'll say they can see half the Russians. And they can see the uh, Indians too, I think. So then they're going to fight the Indians. They're in effective range as well. That's a bit worrying for the uh, Indians. Um, there's no real cover there. So the Kansu's classed as poor shots, but they do have breech loaders. Um, so they're hitting on a five. They do not get first fire. So they would normally have eight dice plus their leader nine dice, but they lose one because they're poor shots. Take us some eight dice. Um, hitting on a straight five. <clears throat> oh, these dice aren't really working tonight. One dice, uh, one hit, so that's all they take. So one hit on the uh, Indians, but it is a dead. Is it the leader? No, it's not. So one of the regular Indians dies from the first shot from those guys. <clears throat> Again, they're breech loaders, so they don't need to reload token. Uh, so they would have another. Oh, I could have aimed, couldn't I? Uh, I'm going to say they aimed, which gives them another hit because they throw one out of the four, uh, which is one shock on the uh, on the Indians. Yeah, sorry, I forgot they can. They've got two actions. They don't need to reload because um, they're breech loaders. So they um, no, quite right. They don't need to reload. Um, it's automatic. So um, they could have fired, aimed and fired, so um, they only rolled one four on top of the six, so one shot, one dead, not a bad return for their, their efforts. Um, they've got one action left, but there's really nothing for them to do, so they're going to stay exactly where they are. Oh, Tiffin, wow. Well, that was interesting. So the boxers have one flag, the allies have zero. <coughs> now then... Do we unleash? Do we unleash the uh, boxers? See whether they can get into contact. It's a long way, but they have got plus four. You know what? They're gonna have a go. They're gonna have a go for these Brits here. They roll oh, 11 plus four. Uh, I think they're in 15 inches. Yeah, they certainly are. So they smash into these fellas here. This could be a very quick game. <laughs> okay. <coughs> so we got some <laughs> got some fisticuffs already. The uh, boxers now they get wild charge, which means they count as ten dice. So normally tribal troops would get eight dice, but because they're, um, they've are they got wild charge, they get ten dice. That's two, four, six, eight, ten dice. Um, the British, dice out for them, they would get six dice. Oof. Six dice for the Brits. Now then, um, leaders attached. I think they're going to have to. So the British have a level two leader. The boxers have a level three. So you get one for each of those. Any command dice, uh, any command flags? No, uh, because there was only one flag and the uh, boxers used it to move that unit. Uh, each quality higher, right. So tribal troops and regulars are the same level, so that doesn't apply. Aggressive, the uh, boxers are aggressive, so they get another two dice there. 
This is not looking good. Um, now then, they don't count as having uh, bayonets, so they lose two dice for that. That seems a bit silly, so they lose the benefit. So they basically the aggression is wiped out by the fact they don't have bayonets. Oh well. Um, each group of shock, they haven't got any. Each supporting group with more than thirty uh, more than fifty percent strength, so they they can be supported there. So they get three dice for that, and they get the support of the other group. So they get three dice there. Um, and that is it. So there's a slight change in the combat system for this. Uh, version of, of um, sharp practice so basically where they, they've changed this again is that um, yeah so basically they say that um, although armed with swords short swords and stricks the Mardist forces were actually at a disadvantage against the soldier with a rifle and bayonet the length of which confers an advantage as such, they count as fighting without bayonets when counting the number of dice. Okay. Um, now, because breech loaders always reload, they basically always counted as loaded. However, at the end of a first round of melee, they count as unloaded because they would have fired them during that fight. Um, and they've also modified the fighting system. So you roll the dice. Each six is a kill and a shock. And a five is just shock. So let's start. Let's start with the um, boxers. They've got two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen dice. Crikey. So we're looking fives and sixes. I can see a lot of sixes already. So, oof. They've just absolutely mullered those British troops. That's five, five, uh, it's only six sixes and two fives, three fives. Gee whiz. Um, yeah, this is, game is going to be dead pretty quickly. So that means six British troops are killed and six lots of shock plus another three lots of shock. <coughs> um, has to affect the leader. Obviously, we rolled a six for that. Um, so a six is a light wound. So basically, five men are killed, and the leader gets light wounded. Plus, they get six, seven, eight, nine shock. Good grief. That is brutal. Their fight back, they get 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11 dice. Um, a more average roll, should we say. 2 killed and 2 shock. So, 2 dead. Uh, is it the leader? Yes, the leader is affected. What happens to him? Rolled a three. He's knocked out by a light minor wound. So he's down. They lose a man. And they would have got one, two, three, four shock. But um, that's all wiped out by the uh, fervor. So they're down to one fervor. So that was a convincing win. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah, we might have to revise these rules a bit. So let's see what the, there's different um, results on, on these uh, variant of the rules. So let me have a look. So if the result is three or more, uh, which it is because the um, British lost two, four, five men to the um, box of one, um, all groups withdraw six inches facing the enemy all formations are broken 
If shock exceeds the number of, pre of troops present, add a further two additional points of shock to the, each group. Right, so, um, crikey. Let's work this through. Let's take the dead away. So this group retires six inches. Um, and this group will have to go with them because they were supporting. However, they're not formed up together now. Well, they weren't anyway, to be fair. Not even sure whether they could have supported that, but whatever, we'll say they did. <clears throat> so where do we apply the shock? Right, so shock needs to be evenly distributed. So they have nine shock. Um, so it's basically going to have five on this group. And four on this group, which pushes them up to five as well. So five and five. Um, they're fine, but these guys have got two shock. Actually, one shock more than um, strike that. So these got five shock from the hand to hand. The variant says that any um, if shock exceeds the number of men present, which it does, uh, they get an additional two. So they're up to seven shock on, well, counting the officer, four men. So they're one off double. Okay, so they're fine for the moment. And then if they get double the amount of shock, they break. So, um, yeah. So on the these guys, they suffered four shock, didn't they? Um, so they actually only lose two on themselves because it's split across the other group. So they go down to three further and two further. And their officer is knocked out. That's more worrying, actually, for them. <clears throat> so that may give the Allies a little bit of a stay of an execution, I suspect. However, it's bad things that happened because um, the British lost the hand-to-hand. -hand. They've also both suffered officer casualties. So, so group obliged to withdraw. Uh, British get two rolls of that. So five and a one. Five is one point. Uh, the one is nothing. Uh, the British had a level two leader wounded. Oops, a six. Okay, uh, level two wounded is two points of shock. So they're down to an eight. Uh, the boxers had a level one leader wounded. Rolled a six. So that's one point of shock for them. That's it. So the upshot of that melee is these guys are on seven shock with three men plus the officer who's wounded and the Indians are on five shock um, but they've got a full, well they're, they're down to seven men. The boxers uh, are pretty, well if it wasn't for the fact they've lost their officer which is going to cause them a few command headaches. So the officer's on the ground. But both these units are very much intact. So that's the end of turn five, which was fairly dramatic. So we'll move to turn six. Right, here we go with turn six. Boxer flag. Blue unit four. So that's the cavalry, the... Hmm. I think they are actually going to withdraw. I don't think we want to be going anywhere near that wood, especially with what's going on behind them. So they're going to turn around and move back. So they'll move back six inches. They're only walking. Also the advantage is that they can then possibly get involved over here if they need to. So that is that. Next card out is a... 
boxer flag. Right, next card is uh, <laughs> yet again boxer four. Boxer four is the um, Kansu Braves over there. Um, I think they're just going to fight the Russians. I think the Russians will get cover. I think because they're partly obscured by that hill. Uh, it's effective range, which we know is a five to hit. Um, but the oh, I did. The, uh, so the Kansus can't present and fire. Um, so I'll have to take one of the shock off those uh, Indians because they're not allowed to do it, which is a bit of a shame. So we get eight dice for the uh, Braves. Um, they would get nine, but uh, they lose one because they're poor shots. Two, four, six, eight. Um, so they're firing at effective range, which is fives to hit. They can't present, so fives to hit. Uh, three hits. Three hits on the Russians. They take, uh, a, a, the one is nothing. A four and a five is two points of shock <coughs> on the Russians. Um, and the Kansu's automatically reload because they've got breech loaders. Next card out is, ooh, that is uh, the big man here on the ground. So can he stand up? Nope, he cannot. However, we could activate that. Well, no, we'll wait for the end of the turn, I think, because can't really activate. A we could activate a group, but that would split them up. And I think I want to keep them as a mob. So um, we'll take a chance. British leader three is the Russian commander. So he is going to turn his troops around or side on like that. Rolls a five. So they're just basically going to go that way. They'll lose one inch because of the two points of shock. And I think they're just going to have to fire uncontrolled volley at these uh, at these dudes here. Two, four, six, eight. So they get nine dice, but they'll lose one because of the shock. Um, it is they don't get first fire. within 12 inches which is close range close range is a four to hit um, and not presenting or anything so just straight up four to hit so it's two four five hits five hits um, we'll put three on this front group and two on the back group So the front group, uh, one is a miss, they lose one man dead. Would it happen to be the officer on the ground? No it is not. Oh, one it is, yes that is. So you've hit him again with a four. I think he's light wounded again. No, li yeah, so um, that's two light wounds which means he's dead. The officer is down. So that's uh, that's a bit of a downer. And the shock basically takes one of the fervor off. Oof, okay. That's that's painful. Uh, over here they only suffered a five and a one, which is one off their fervor. So they're down to this group over here has two, this group has one. Um, but more importantly, their officer is dead. So a roll for bad things that happened, a two. Um, He's only a level one, well, he is a level two leader, so oh, still only one point off. So their force morale drops to nine. The allies are on eight. But more importantly, it means they have no officer anymore. So basically you can replace a dead leader 
what happens is um, when the dead leader's card is next dealt, ignore it, in a subsequent turn when the leader's card comes out, the player can attempt to repl replace the leader rolling a d6. Um, because these are tribals, they need fives or sixes to replace. He'll be one lower than the, start, than the previous guy. Um, so they're going to have to move on cards now. There's nothing else can happen. Right. Interesting. British leader one. They needed that. So that's the big man here. He's down to a level one commander only though. Um, I haven't got any cards either, have I? Okay, so all he's going to do is, he's got two actions, he's going to remove two points of shock. I think that's all we can do. Try and keep these guys in the fight. Uh, boxer leader two. So that is the boxer group over here. I think they need to keep the pressure on, so they're going to come round as fast as they can. Oh, three inches plus the three they already have, so only six inches for them this time. It's a shame they really wanted to coordinate that attack, but um, I think. Yeah, well, they, they, they had to, the other group had to go in when it had the chance. I don't think they had much else to do. They managed to catch the British and Indians on the hop, but it does mean now it's a bit of an isolated attack. Um, so the boxers get to there. And there's Tiffin. Okay, so we have um, two boxer flags and no allied flags. Hmm. So the boxers... Now they didn't actually move anything with this group because the officer tried to stand up. So they could move that group as one activation. I think that's what they're going to have to do. I think they need to try and finish off. The British. Which is a bit of a nightmare for the Brits, but I think there's really nothing else. So I think really what these guys are going to do is try and finish off the British. So they roll uh, a seven plus two, so nine inches easily enough, and they smash back into these fellas here. Even though they haven't got an officer, I think that's they've got enough juice in the system to get going. So this mob piles forward again, smashing into the uh, the British infantry. This is not going to go well for the Brits. So we know that the uh, boxers get 10 dice because they have wild charge. They don't have a leader to put in. I don't have any command cards of so the same quality. They get two for aggressive, but they lose that two because they classed as not having any bayonets. Um, they get three for each support for a supporting group. And that's their lot. So we'll roll this, see what comes off. Keep the uh, further dice with them. So fives and sixes we're looking for. Ooh, not so good this time. Well, they killed two. <laughs> um, no fives. That's all they did, just two dead. So two of the Brits die. Um, And they get two additional shock. Uh, they're on. Oh, was it was it uh, the officer that was hurt? No, it was not. So that's all they suffered. Two losses. The Brits fighting back. Um, they're only a half strength unit, so they only get three dice. Their leader might as well fight. 
he's now down to a uh, yeah he's a level two leader down to a level one because he was wounded so it's one dice um, that's it I think that's all they have oh shock oh crikey um, each two points of shock so they had oh I'm gonna have to look back oh, I can't be bothered I think it was they had four no, they definitely didn't have one did they maybe they did because it was spread over and they just took it off all right I'm gonna take one so that's no shock off I may have got that wrong and I can't be asked to go back basically so four dice they throw <coughs> a lousy roll so they just get one shock in return um, we'll take it off that group so that takes their further down um, which means the uh, boxers only win by two so loser falls back one inch for each point of shock on that group and the formations remain in contact um, so they're now on three shock go back to using the counters it's easier to see and less chance of me knocking them over so the the uh, three men with uh, they go about one inch that's all like that they're on three shock which makes them move again back one inch because uh, they've got excess shock and so there's uh, two bad things that happen a five and a two I think it's just one off yeah just one point of, sh of uh, force morale gone and that is everything I think oh the uh, boxes have got one more activation haven't they hmm okay so the box have got one more activation. Uh, the only unit that hasn't moved is this unit, Kansu's, at the back there. So they are going to move forward. I think they need to get forward and put some pressure on the allies. Uh, eight. They'll lose the three because of the wall. They'll come forward to there. There we go. And that's the end of that turn. The Brits are just about holding on. Just about. Not quite sure how, but they are. Um, mainly because the uh, after outrageous dice from the boxers last turn, this turn it wasn't so good. So, yeah. All right, shuffle the pack. We'll be back. Okay, so update on the situation. We've obviously got this big group of boxers that has. Uh, pretty much annihilated that British formation however in doing so they've lost their officer um, so they can only now move on cards um, the uh, Indians um, have got four lots of shock so they're in a little bit of trouble too but the cavalry have turned round which is actually very useful because they may well be needed to have a go against these uh, ma mad boxers You've got the in, uh, the uh, Russians have also turned back to try and put some uh, some support. You've got both units of Kansu Braves moving up slowly there, and another big formation of boxers slowly coming around. Really, uh, the boxers could do with getting them in as quickly as possible. But uh, such as the vagaries of the of the cards and the dice, we don't know. So first card out is British one, very useful. So it's this dude here. He's a level one commander. Um, I think last turn I took too much shock off him. I did, because he's only a level one commander. Anyway, um, so I think all he can do is take shock off. So that means they're on th two, sh two figures with two shock. That's all he can do, because he's now a level one. Blue lead, uh, British leader four. So that is the cavalry. Now then, I think they're going to have to get going. So um, they're walking at the moment. So 
so can we get them up to the canter so that would be uh, plus three on each dice hmm let's see what they can do and a, uh, a nine plus six is 15 inches so that is more than enough so they'll swing through and charge into the uh, into these fellas into the boxers crikey this is bloody this is bloody right um, they have got tally ho but I couldn't use it because they couldn't um, uh, they haven't got any command cards yet British have suffered from lack of command cards that is for sure so for this combat let's start with the Bengal Lancers um, they are impact cavalry so they get nine dice nine um, they have a leader attached who's level one uh, let's put him beside them and he genuinely is attached um, no command dice are they a quality higher uh, no, Lancers and Tribal Cavalry are the same. They are aggressive, so that gives them plus two. Um, they've got no shock, they haven't got any supports, so and that is it. That's what they roll. Now for the boxers. This time, because they are not charging, they don't get the wild charge option, obviously. So they are just tribal infantry <coughs> who get eight dice. Eight. Um, they haven't got a leader to attach. They haven't got any command. They are aggressive, but then they're going to lose that for being no bayonets, um, which is a bit daft, but there you go. Um... They got no shock. However, they have got a, um, a support with those. That's another three dice. So they've got whatever they've got: three, six, nine, ten, eleven dice. The cavalry have three, six, nine, twelve dice. So it's only one dice in it. So let's see what happens. Let's do the boxers. So cock dice. So they get two sixes. The three sixes even. Count them, Dom. Three sixes. <clears throat> the Bengal Lancers. They get that's actually a one, bizarrely. Two three oh so they win so the Bengals do three dead and two shock and the uh, boxers do three dead and yeah an associated shock so let's start uh, boxers did three so that's three dead is it um, an officer no it is not so it's just three regular troopers quite costly um, and they get three shock in this variant remember you get shock and a kill with a six just shock with a five uh, the Lancers did three dead there's no officer to kill so we take one two three of those fellas plus they do uh, three four five shock um, so we'll take, we have to do it evenly, so we'll put um, three there and two there. So basically, they lose the last of their fervor and get two shock on top. This group just lose one, 
so they lose their last remaining fervor. So all fervor has gone. And the result of that combat was a draw in terms of death. So let me just check. <coughs> Yeah, draw. Locked in combat unless the shock exceeds the number of the moot in, in the group. So at the moment, uh, the cavalry have four um, men and three shock. This group certainly has more. So they stay locked in combat. Don't know whether that helps them or not, to be honest, but it buys some time, which is kind of useful. Blimey, these uh, boxers are very, very brutal. Right, next card. Boxer flag. Tiffin. Oh my goodness. Okay, so this group can't do anything. Um, I think what we have to do is try and bring up the other boxer group. I think that's uh, a boxer mob. So they're going to keep. They're going to head forward as fast as they can. Uh, seven plus three, ten inches. Brings them up to there. And that is the end of turn six. Right then, on with turn seven. Start with a boxer flag, then a um, British flag. So, ooh, okay. Um, next one is boxer leader two. That is this group here. Now, what kind of mayhem can they cause? Uh, they've got plus three on their movements because they've got three fervor. Move those out of the way. I think they're just going to run forward as fast as they can really um, it's all looking a bit messy here for the coalition forces who are getting caught in the corner okay so they rolled a 10 that's 13 13 gets them to there Oof. this is really really looking bad for the uh, coalition forces very bad indeed. It's funny when I was working out of working out the forces in this, I thought, crikey, um, it doesn't look like there's that many uh, boxers to uh, coalition forces, and I thought it might be. Well, I thought it might be a walkover for the coalition forces, but at the moment it's the opposite way round. Next card, another flag. That's a British flag. So, I think they've got to keep going. And there is a boxer flag, so that's two flags for them. Might as well keep going. Boxer leader three, okay. That is the group of um, Kansu warriors that are there. I don't think they've got a view of anything. They can just maybe hit these. Oh, can I hit those? I mean, there's a gap down there to hit those, um, hit those Indian troops. They'd probably get some sort of cover. And it's well inside effective range. I think they're just gonna, I think they, well, they can't, um, they can't aim. So they might as well move one dice. <laughs> a whole inch. <laughs> Why does that always happen? So they'll just sort of twist like that. And then I think they'll fire at the Indians. I think that's got to be worth it. So we're down to, well, it would be nine with the leader, but they're poor shots, so it goes down to just straight up eight. Um, they are an effective range, which is a five or a six to hit. One, two, three. Three hits and two of which are sixes, so two dead. 
So is it the, um, oh this would be brutal, is it the Indian officer? No it is not, bad enough losing two men and they get one shock. So the Indians are down to five men and an officer and they've got five shock. Ouch. Now both those groups of um, Kansus are firing uncontrollably um, because they can't present. So I need to remember that. It's all been uh, boxer cut. Oh my goodness, the other unit of uh, Kansu. Um, now they haven't got anything to fire at. So we're going to have to try and control them. They count as militia. A four is not good enough, so basically they just blast away at nothing. And this is the other. So that is the um, dead boxer leader. So next time his card comes out, we can dice and see if we can replace him. And there's Tiffin. Oh my goodness. This has been absolute trouncing for the coalition forces. So, we have two flags apiece, um, force morale is uh, boxer's uh, favour at the moment, um, so what hasn't moved for the boxers? Basically the only thing that hasn't moved for the boxers is the guys that are in hand to hand. So I think we'll move and do the hand to hand. Oh, this was the one remaining guy. Okay, boxers against the Bengal cavalry. My fears the Bengal cavalry might not be long for this world. So that group there that's fighting, and then these are supporting. So they have um, they're still full strength. Yeah, because they're still over. Well, still more than half strength. Uh, now they aren't charging anymore, so they just, inverted commas, get eight dice. They've got no leader to attach, they've got no command cards. They are aggressive, but they've got no bayonets, so evens out. Um, they've got two points of shock, so that loses them one dice. But they are supported by another group, which gives them three dice. So let's work this one out. Fives and sixes. So we've got two fives and one six. Two fives and one six. We'll work that out in a minute. So the Lancers. So cavalry, impact cavalry at the halt gets six dice. Six. They're going to get another one for the leader. <clears throat> uh, they are aggressive. So they get two more for that. However, they've got three shocks. So they lose one for that. Um, and that's it. They kill nobody and do two shock. Okay, now then, so one killed on the Bengal side, was it their commander? Or oh, it was uh, six is a light wound, I believe. Yeah, light wound. So he's now a level zero leader. Um, and they took three shock. The um, boxers take two shock only, which they can spread across the whole piece. So, one on that group and one on that group. Um, so basically, it's a bad thing that's happened for the coalition, but a one is not going to matter. Um, they have lost by one. So you stay locked in combat. A 
unless the shock exceeds the number of men in the group. Now then, they do. So they have four, five, six shock on a uh, effectively a four-man unit. So they have to retire two inches. Like that. That's another bad thing that's happened. A six, that's probably going to be one off. Yeah, one off force morale. So that is that. So that was the uh, boxer uh, flag. They've got another flag, but they're not going to be able to use it. The coalition have two. So what are they going to do? This is really, really awkward. This is really, really nasty for them. Um, I think they're going to start with the Russians. Um, they got a level one commander, so he can't remove any shock. Sadly, I think he's going to have to turn back round. Huh. Well, actually, one one activation will turn them round, which is what they need to do. And I think they'll just fire. I think that's all they can do. So two, four, six, eight, nine dice. Two, four six eight nine dice it is close range for them so they're hitting on a four yeah hitting on four they can't present or anything um so four oh uh, roll that again because they lose them lose one for that um for two shock well, that's pretty good shooting for the Russians, they hit with all but two. So I put three and three. Three on this group closest. Uh, that's just one shock, which pushes that further down one. And on the group, this side, oh, left the officer behind. On the, the other side, that's three shock, so that wipes out all their further. Okay. They can instantly reload, but they are firing on an uncontrolled volley. And then their second activation, or second flag, it's going to have to be these fellas here. Um, hmm. This is not easy, not easy. So they could be very aggressive. Trouble is they've got five shock. This is really, I think it's pretty much game over for the coalition forces already. Um, they charge in there. They're going to get six dice against enemy eight dice. However, they will. They're going to lose two of them, four dice. I think they're going to have to try and buy some time. So they're going to charge those fellas there. Uh, roll two dice, they're going to lose two, but uh, they rolled a five, which gives them three inches, so that's perfectly fine. And they're going to charge in there. Um, yeah, it's a risky move, but I think they've got to try and stem the tide. The rush, uh, the Indians get six dice. Two, four, six. They get another one for the leader. Actually, uh, yes, six dice. Got another one for the leader because they're still over half strength. Um, are they aggressive? No. So they got six dice plus their leader is seven. Um, they are the same quality. Um, they got. Lose a dice for each two points of shock, so they'll lose two dice for that. Um, and that's it. So just five dice. Just one kill. Just one kill on this group. And becomes one shock as well. Uh, fighting back, the tribesmen 
Get eight dice. Um, they are aggressive but unloaded, uh, uh, but no bayonet, so that cancels out. They've got four shock, uh, sorry, three shock because the other one's just been given, so we'll take one dice away for that. They can't put any officer in. Uh, they get three for the supporting group. So they get all this. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, you can't. He can't deal with dice like this. Whoops. Um, that was three dead and four shock. Uh, is it the officer? Yes, one of them is the officer. And a five is a light wound. So two additional men die. So two plays one on the casualties. They also suffer two four, six, seven, seven fatigue, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, um, yeah, that's brutal, that is absolutely brutal, so they actually lost two to one, um, but this formation is broken, and we'll break and run from the table. And I think that's pretty much game over, isn't it? You've got this, the Indians are destroyed, the British infantry are destroyed, the Bengal cavalry are just a little bit worn out, more than a little bit worn out, they're on the brink of, of running. And the boxers have got an entire group here, mob, untouched. This group over here, half of them are perfectly okay the other half are a little bit worn out and they've got all the kansus still to exploit it against basically the russians i think uh, it's history so i think i'm going to call that a resounding boxer win um and i don't really know what to think about the rules for that um it seemed a very one-sided affair, but I think partly that was down to the cards. Um, the the boxers definitely got the run on the cards, even though both sides had only four commanders, so it wasn't like they had more cards in the pack or anything like that. But the um, the extra fervor um, is a huge advantage to the boxers. So that big group managed to go all the way around the top. Um, and I mean, if you think it came from that point over there, went all the way around through that wood and hit those boys there when the British are only coming on on that corner. Um, that plus five on their move, plus the fact their card came out more often, really was a huge advantage to the boxers and managed to pin the allies down in this corner without being able to put out a proper firing line. Um, and um, yeah really it was all over once the once that charge went in um it was brutally efficient and i think i'll have to think about how to play this in future i think the i mean i didn't play any of the extras so i didn't give anybody any um uh, you know any uh, support points or anything like that because i just wanted to try the rules out um i may well play this again just this time um having a few support points and what have you um, the Bengal Lancers were very, very effective, but very brittle. Uh, once they, once they'd done their charge, they were kind of done. Um, yeah, don't know quite what to say, really. The, uh, the boxers absolutely wiped the floor of the colonists. And I guess the coalition forces, if they'd been able to get into defensive positions, provide supporting fire to each other, their rifle fire would have been very effective. But they never managed to do it because the cards never came out and this they were basically swamped before um, they could do anything about it so there you go i'm going to call that a uh, a boxer win the rebellion is strong and uh, we'll continue uh, with more games in the future let me know what you think in the comments section down below uh, was it just the rules didn't really help the allies or was it just 
the run of the cards which you get sometimes in sharp practice. I have to say also some of the dice for the boxers was a little bit brutal, uh, whereas the allies didn't really seem to have quite the same luck on the dice. Um, but there you go. But there you go, the boxers win. Let me know what you think. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Um, share, do all that good stuff. And I will see you again soon. This is Dom, signing out.